We'll shift gears now literally and talk about the other big theme. This is the year where we're talking about the turnaround of the private sector's CapEx cycle. Kumar Mangalam Birla had recently called it the year of the Mahakum of CapEx. It's not just m &A activity, but big announcements that you see from private companies to increase their capacity. Let's talk about one of the biggest beneficiaries of that, Thermax. Thermax trading about 2% in the green at the moment. Ashish Bandari, the MD and CEO, live with us on today's show. Good morning. Like I was just talking about, the CapEx cycle theme is certainly playing out. The government is doing its bit. It's seeming like the private sector is also doing its bit. We've seen capacity utilization for India Inc. at around 75%. Uh, speaking for Thermax specifically, can you share with us, uh, have you seen a big uptick in your order book? A very good morning to you, Nayantara, and to the rest of the ET team. Yes, we have been seeing an uptick in our order book. Uh, and that is not just now, that trend has been going for the last four plus quarters right after the COVID recovery. At first it was um, a bit of a V-shaped recovery, but now we have gone well beyond the V now. Like I was saying, uh, the CapEx cycle turnaround, you're one of the big beneficiaries of that. Thermax, year to date, the stock price is up by nearly 40%. You're saying that the order book uptick has been going on for some time now. But I was hoping that could you help us understand the new orders, are they primarily from the government, public sector undertaking states, or are you also seeing um, you know, similar performance from the private sector? Just trying to understand on ground whether the private sector announcements are primarily just announcements or are they being executed too? And there I would say it's uh, the private sector is spending and I'll say why that is the case. Uh, the headlines are about uh, the steel industry, the cement, uh, the big refining, petrochemical companies. Uh, the interesting part has been the strength we have seen from uh, the broader segment. And Thermax works with nearly 140 distributors all across the country. And we cater to segments as varied as uh, tire, rubber, textiles, pharma, uh, food, um, all kinds of industries that make up the breadth of Indi India's industrial segments. And across all of these segments, there has been growth. And on the channel side, for now, probably four out of our last five quarters have been four out of our best five quarters in the history of our channel business. So we are seeing continued growth, not just on the big headline numbers, but this is uh, private spending driven both by need for diversifying energy options like cleaner energy, biomass, waste to energy, but also by greenfield new projects uh, coming up. Right. But Ashish, could you quantify this? Could you tell me what is the mix between government and private orders? See, it's, uh, for us, uh, the number is more like um, 75, 25, where 75 percent of our orders are, on a, in a typical quarter, are private orders. 25 are driven by some PSU-based spending. We do not do as much work with state governments. We do practically no business with municipalities. Um, and when we talk about uh, the central government, it's through PSUs that could be NTPC, IOCL, um, ONGC, and the like. With some of them, the government projects tend to be bigger in value. So you will see ups and downs, but in a typical quarter, I would say it's 75, 25, uh, with 25% driven by government spending, 75 by private sector. Sure. Uh, Ashish, when we talk about international orders, I understand that they account for 20% of your order book. Is there any impact on your order book, considering the slowdown in Europe and US, which is feared? So our, actually our international percentage is more like 30% across our portfolio. And in both of these cases, uh, we haven't seen a slowdown yet. Um, in Europe where we have two plants, uh, both of our plants are actually seeing increased order activity because as, US look, as Europe looks to decouple from Russia, uh, many of our plants which run on biomass, alternate fuels, electricity, are actually seeing uptick in orders. The challenge that we have is that commodity prices there have gone up quite substantially. 
and trouble in finding suitable labor because that business was flat for many years and is now suddenly seeing an uptick. So the challenge is more on delivery. For our US business, there, is, uh, there are some pressures, but our chemicals business, which sells quite a bit in the US, our market shares are so low that the larger drive around how do we increase penetration, how do we improve our share is, is more of a theme than, a, than what is the overall market size. At. Yeah, the market is still very, very big and we are a much smaller part of the overall pie. So in neither case, I would say there is, a, uh, there is any big signs of slowdown. Clearly though, India is growing much faster than any of our international businesses right now. The domestic growth is a larger part of the story. Mr. Bhandari, in 2020 and 2021, we heard so much about ESG going green as the future and the near future. But that all seems to have changed. We've seen the global energy shock. It was exactly a week ago that India's finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman, said that, you know, India is also part of the jolt and would have to rely more on coal and thermal power longer than it thought it would need to. Having said that, what will it mean for Thermax? Thermax, where 70% of your revenue still comes uh, from building thermal capacity. Is that the way you're also going to move forward, rely more on that, or are you going to use maybe this interim period to focus more on renewable, going green, ESG? So, Nayantara, I would say the opposite. 70% yes. of our business is actually driven by uh, non-fossil fuel-based applications. And, um, and we haven't done a utility-based um, thermal power plant for quite some time. Yeah, and, um, and if India comes out and says that I'm going to build uh, five more um, ultra supercritical power plants, I don't think that is Thermax's uh, sweet spot, nor would we be actively looking at those projects. Our focus is industrial customers, the need for those industrial customers, and how that energy equation is changing. And that energy equation is distinctly and definitely moving towards more energy efficiency, more fuel flexibility, and more renewables. And that's where we are. Yeah, in places such as biomass, we have done a lot of work. And if you look at uh, below, our, below our big orders, a big chunk of our growth has been driven by, by this segment. We are doing a lot of work uh, in waste to energy, municipal solid waste, uh, doing very interesting applications with water, with biomass, um, now, increasingly, we have a play on the solar side as well, actively looking at other opportunities. So, so our focus is entirely on energy efficiency, renewables, um, helping customers bridge energy availability with energy sustainability. Right. Ash Bhandari, thank you so much for joining us today and throwing color on what exactly is happening on ground. Private sector CapEx is picking up a confirmation that is coming in from Thermax. Not at all interested now in critical thermal power capacity building, confirming that India Inc. is also moving towards more efficient uh, usage uh, as is being seen with the order book of Thermax, the stock higher by 40% year to date. Right, uh, let's head back to Motown. Um, 